Hi, my name is Paul K. Matsuda from Arizona State University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the job search process. I'm specifically going to focus on the letters of recommendation, which is one of the most important elements of the job search process. And my focus in this video is going to be tenure track positions or senior lecturer positions uh, in US higher education context and other contexts might have different requirements or different contingencies that I'm not aware of. Uh, so that's just a disclaimer. For people who are finishing their PhDs, uh, one of the most important uh, considerations is to start early. Tenure track positions and lecturer positions tend to start coming out in late September to early October, sometimes earlier, uh, but many of them come out uh, at the beginning of um, the fall, fall semester for many people. Um, so it's important to have all the documents uh, ready by uh, the end of August. And the documents might include your CV, uh, cover letter, uh, application letter, uh, and this could be a template that can be adapted for different positions, and sample writing uh, of, from your work, research work. Uh, it could be published articles, manuscripts uh, that are being considered, or chapters from your dissertation. And by this point, it's ideal to have at least a few chapters, two or three chapters drafted, uh, so that you can persuasively argue that by the end of this academic year, you're going to finish your dissertation. And another document that you might want to have is uh, a timeline of your work history with each individual faculty members who are going to be writing the letter. And this is important because even though your advisor may not know you very well, they may not remember all the details about each project. Uh, I work with 10, uh, around 10 PhD students at a time, and over the course of five years, four to, four to five years, we work on many different projects. And I can't keep track of uh, who's doing what. Uh, and sometimes some of the best details uh, are completely forgotten. Um, so it's important to have some documentation of your work history so that the, the person who's writing the letters of recommendation can refer to the document uh, if necessary. And I would suggest having these documents available online or in a shared folder or something like that so that your advisor can access the document anytime they need. Uh, and having it online or in a sh shared folder has the added advantage of being able to update these documents when circumstances change or add more documents as they become available. And um, these documents need to be well organized so that the advisors don't have to uh, read through everything in order to understand what's there. So having a table of contents or uh, information about what each document contains uh, might be helpful uh, in some cases. And some advisors uh, prefer to have all the documents up front. Uh, I'm that way, I, and I ask my, all my students to submit uh, or make available all these documents when, before or when they make the request for letters of recommendation. Um, but other advisors might not uh, want to have all the information up front. So you need to find out the individual preferences and then uh, be, be ready to present the documents uh, as they become necessary or appropriate. And another consideration uh, in having strong letters of recommendation written is to choose wisely, that is, you don't want to pick any random person just because they are nice or just because you've uh, had a good relationship. Um, and letters of recommendations are not persuasive if there aren't strong and detailed explanation and descriptions of what you did with that person um, and uh, with, along with the person's evaluation. Um, a letter, a lukewarm letter that says something like, oh, I like this person, this person is really nice, or I've uh, looked at a draft of a manuscript or uh, a dissertation and it looks great. 
doesn't really uh, work. So a letter should have much more uh, specific details uh, about how the person, the capacity in which the person knows the candidate, the job candidate, uh, and what kind of projects they've worked on together, and uh, along with the evaluation of how you performed, what your strengths are, and what some of the areas of development might be. Now, in US letters of recommendation, uh, it's not less typical to focus on areas of development in a job application letter. The job application, uh, the, uh, the letters of recommendation. Letters of recommendations tend to be all positive and any hint of negativity, even a very subtle one, uh, sends the message to the, the search job search committee that maybe there is a, a problem that they should look into further, uh, or that might be a reason enough for the application to be dismissed. Uh, so it's really important to choose someone uh, who can write really strong letters with specific details. And some graduate students uh, think that they can get a letter from some famous professor uh, who has uh, seen your conference presentation or maybe you've had coffee or drinks with them uh, and that's not a good enough uh, relationship. You really have to have a strong and, uh, and close working relationship. Uh, and if you have a letter from a famous person, but if the letter is lukewarm, uh, the committee is going to see through it. And that might actually affect your case negatively rather than positively. Uh, so we need to be really careful about uh, how to choose the committee members and how to choose people to write letters of recommendation. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to say for now. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you, and I hope to see you uh, at one of the AAAL conferences in the near future. Thank you.